Hello and welcome to these three videos as a tutorial on how to use Excel to obtain a value using a graphical method with an uncertainty. Now it's the expectation that you already have some experience of using spreadsheets in Excel. Now the aim of these talks is to provide that gap between A-level physics and that progression onto university. So although it's targeting A-level physicists, it's also supporting first year and second year undergraduates. What we're striving for is an appropriate estimation of your error in your value, from which once we have a value with an uncertainty, we can comment upon the accuracy and try and improve the precision of our experiments. There's three parts to this, these videos. First is calculating uncertainty Excel and how you propagate errors. The second is how we plot uncertainties. And the third is how you use two gradients to quantify uncertainty in a final answer. To demonstrate this, we're looking at a very simple experiment where we're trying to find the resistivity of a a wire, this one's a nichrome alloy, and all you're doing is varying the length and measuring, sometimes you change the supply, PD, uh, measuring the potential difference across the wire and the current passing through the circuit. For this experiment, we used a screw gauge micrometer to measure the diameter of the cylindrical wire. Um, this had a tolerance of 0 0.01 millimeters, an uncertainty. Um, for this experiment, it's advisable to measure three sections of the wire so that you, you have a good account of any variation in thickness across the wire. Now I've taken those values, those three values and as diameters and put them into this table and I'll, I've used the um, the formula, the function average and then selected those values and dragged down and placed those into a table to find the average of those three values. Now we use the capital symbol delta, the Greek letter delta, to symbolize absolute uncertainty is what we measure. Now to do that you go to insert symbol, choose um, the font that you're using. Uh, once you've selected your font, you choose your subject, which this is a Greek letter, delta. Pick your Greek letter, insert it, and then we can use that in our table. Now, of course, Greek letters are optional, but sometimes they're nice. Now it's uh, now the opportunity to record our uncertainty of this table, and of course, from the micrometer, we've got the same uncertainty for each each measurement. And then we have to think, consider the overall uncertainty that we measure. Now, at A-level, there's a nice simple rule for this. Um, the uncertainty, delta x, the change in a value, is half the range of the value. Um, now, to do that, all we have to do is take 0.5 times the maximum, the difference between the maximum of a range of values minus the minimum of a range of values. Now, of course, this isn't a perfect... Um, System. By doing this, we do get an uncertainty. But what it doesn't account for is the fact that if we take lots and lots of values, there is a statistical advantage of doing that, and it does improve our precision at that value of plus or minus x. So at university, there are advantages, and what we do for that is we actually use this, this quantity called the standard error. Now, the standard error is just simply the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of values taken. So there is an advantage in averaging. Um, and it does, of course, improve your precision. Now, at this point, it's worth noting that that plus or minus value, that error that the value can lie within, isn't just a fixed value. It's not that your value can't lie outside of that. It's just a statistical quantity in that 68, if we did the measurement again, there's a 68% probability that it would lie within those values. And this is represented by a normal distribution of values around a given value, your average, your mean. So now we have the diameter of the wire, we can find out the area just using, for a cross section, using pi r squared. So this we do from the average, all we have to do is pi in Excel is pi with the double brackets after it, open close, it's times the value, but of course we want our final answer in SI base units. So we multiply it by 10 to the minus 3 to put it into meters, uh, square that up, and then divide by 4 to get our area. Now at A level, because we're multiplying or dividing, what percentage uncertainties add together? And as we've got a squared, that means that percentage uncertainty in area is equal to 2 times the percentage uncertainty in diameter. We can write the percentage uncertainty, or in this case, strictly speaking, the fractional uncertainty in the area, epsilon A, as the absolute uncertainty, delta A, divided by A. So in terms of the spreadsheet, all we have to do is take the, to find the absolute uncertainty in A, we take the 
value of A, multiply it by 2 times the absolute uncertainty in D divided by the diameter of D. Now, A-level studies are a good approximation of what is required and a true understanding of uncertainties. But at university, we have to consider this a bit further and really take into account the statistical nature of uncertainties. Now, instead of just absolute uncer percentage uncertainties adding together when you're multiplying or dividing values, in reality, what you need is those values squared, and this is what's termed as quadrature. So the equations that you put in will be slightly different at A-level, but I've outlined them in this book. Now, just to outline that, I think it's very worth anyone who's studying undergraduate physics to um, research standard deviations of the mean and, and where we derive these quadratic, this quadrature from. Now, we can use the skills that we've learned to record all our data in a table. Now, what I like to do when I record data is make sure that um, the values are inserted so you can use the uncertainty. So I've just put in here plus or minus the uncertainty and the unit. So length in meters plus or minus 0 0.005 meters. Now the rest of this is just um, recording data, so just inputting data from what you do for an experiment. So just zooming through this bit, uh, you can obviously set up your tables how you'd like. Once you have a complete table, then the next step is just to find out the resistance of the wire, the piece of wire that you're measuring at each length, each length. And to use that, we use Ohm's law, which is resistance equals potential difference divided by current. Once you've recorded the resistance at every length, and then added it to your table, you can find out the uncertainties um, as, the as it's multiplying and dividing again, in this case dividing, it's the fractional uncertainties that add together. Um, and we can use a similar method before to, to fix these values. And there's the advanced version for undergraduate students on there that you can pause. Now what you have to do here is we're going to take the absolute value from the table, but because that value doesn't change as you drag down the, down the, the uh, spreadsheet, the column, what you need to do is fix that value by pressing F4 when you select it. So that will put the dollar signs around it and that fixes that term. Now you can use this to calculate those absolute uncertainties and drag those down to, to populate the column. So now we have our values ready in a table to um, plot as a graph, which we'll do in our next video.